This is actually a random question, but do you think you would ever do mushrooms? No. The prohibition is anything that compromises the intellect. Even if it expands the intellect and makes it smarter? Well, okay, where does coffee it, fall? It, I've never encountered anyone who commits a crime because they drank a lot of coffee or a lot of tea. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how it nets out in Judaism, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think in this respect, Judaism and Islam differ quite a bit because, you know, in Judaism, we have wine as part of many rituals, right. like alcohol is something that is very celebrated in a ritualistic sense. So mm. um, the whole notion of shifting conscious states um, is part of spirituality in Judaism. So there's nothing against the use of psychedelics mm. in Judaism. So pro-psychedelics, pro -psychedelic. anti-shellfish. <laughs> yes. we, we do the shellfish, we, we but the not, shellfish. The, not the shrooms. We, we yeah. the shellfish. I think these things might be connected. So are you, in Jewish law, is it permissible if I take cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I just yeah. want to know where I'm, I, where I'm going to stand with God if I do it. You know? right. <laughs> I'm not a Jewish law expert, so I don't know how to answer that full on. So. I wish Muslims would, would give the same response when, when it came to Islamic law. Oh, it's not knowing something yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. don't know how profound that is. No, it's, Muslims don't do it because they have access to Islam Q&A. <laughs> In this episode, the psychedelic kind of opens up a breakthrough of something that's kind of underlying that they need to deal with. It kind of becomes this this strange phenomenon of like, mm. okay, you're doing something you're not supposed to do, but then like, well, we're, was it written for you to do that? And I think that's the the thing that people who, who um, whether they're on a spiritual path or aren't on one, are always constantly debating when the concept of, of spirituality comes up. Yeah. You, you know, the whole idea of maktub, what is written, right? Yes. In Muslim culture, there is an enormous amount of, um, misunderstanding about it, about this, because nowhere in the Quran does it say that things are predestined. I've often thought if, uh, you know, why did I end up in the United States mm. while a lot of the people I grew up with who were never ever, who were never able to leave Egypt ended up in prison mm. and mm. Um, political prison. It, it, it burdens you, right? I mean, right. it's like, okay, so God chose this for me. How do you express gratitude? Mm. Uh, how do you live up to the responsibility? I think most things we don't actually have control over because most things actually function in the unseen realm. Mm. And even just thinking about like, how much do you know about yourself and your body and the different things that are going on inside, it's, we largely don't know much actually. God's will complements our will. Mm. I mean, if, you're, if you are determined to be a loser, you know, God will send you a lot of signs. God that you're will, a loser? Will, will, no, that, that, to, to change your path, to oh, stop okay. being yeah, a loser. Yeah, 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 that would be crazy. You know, I got those signs. That'd be if, crazy. You, <laughs> if you ignore the signs, then, you know, chaos. It's like, okay. Yeah. You just, like, triggered, like, a memory of how I even began writing, uh, like, you know, songs that meant something to me the day that I got arrested, like, mm. when I had, like, a, I got a gun charge. And I remember th sitting in the car when we got pulled over and nothing made sense. Like I wasn't supposed to be arrested. Like somehow the driver didn't have a driver's license with him. You know mm. what I mean? And then the insurance was just expired in his vehicle so we couldn't drive it. And every single person that I called to come and pick up the car didn't answer their phone. Mm. And so then that led to a search where they found a gun and then I got arrested for the gun. And I was I remember sitting in the cell thinking, well, it's over for me. And I couldn't leave Toronto for almost a year. But in that year, I confronted, you know, so much that I was dealing with that I was escaping in the years prior. Wow. And so it was like all of those kind of experiences and those traumas kind of compounding led me to, I think, uh, to like, to an artistry that I didn't even think that I was capable of like holding in my body. Mm. But you know what? My dad told me that making music was gonna keep me far from the faith and I'm here sitting with the sheikh. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually amazing. I really, no, I really just took it in that I'm here having a conversation with the sheikh because I wrote songs. 
your your dad was wrong because me, me, music is a path to God. Yeah, it was a path to you, and you are close to God, and now I am, as a result of that, closer to God. But then, all of that feels predestined for me. You know what I mean? But, but if you if you would have chosen to to play video games. It, you know, you got the, the you know creative impulse, and you say, "No, I'm 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 gonna go play video games instead." You you thwart, and that, that's why it's a, that's where the choice comes in. That's where the choice yeah, comes in. Yeah, you were presented with an opportunity to do the alternative thing, and then. But and the thing is, like, would that always have been my like destiny anyway? If that's what was written I, for I don't me? think so. There's the destiny A and destiny B. Destiny A, if if you act. If you choose to act on, on God's gift, and destiny be if you choose to ignore God's gifts. Which actually is very much like video games. So maybe yeah, video games are profound. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, 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 I feel, I mean, I'm, I'm curious, like, even in your, in your work, Hadar, because it's, it's, it's such an intersection between art and, and spirituality. Like, I mean, th that must feel like a present choice that's always there. Yeah, definitely. I think that sometimes when we think about God, we think of God as an external being that in some ways is like the divine will is being imposed on us versus actually God lives within us. Um, it's not really one or the other. It's actually more of a co-creation process. And I certainly feel this way as an artist and as a spiritual teacher um, that I'm actually co-creating with God, with the mm -hmm. divine. So mm -hmm. I make a step, God makes a step, we meet each other and then we're like, we take a little break, we discuss, we're like, did that work out? No, I think it's also it. interesting like seeing with like Rami's character on the show because, you know, a lot of times we make choices or we take actions and we don't think that it's gonna catch up to us because you know, obviously we're living in a time where there's really such a high level of lack of accountability from multiple beings, multiple systems, um, men. and men for sure. Um, and we see this also with Rami's character. That's, uh, that's what I'm talking about, the character. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that. Rami character, you, you know, right, yeah, right. I mean, I'm gonna just take the hit for all of us and say yes. Wow, thank you, we need yes, more men like you. I'm, yes, and just tell me what, what's next. <laughs> yeah, for me, I think that what it means to be a person who's devoted to God is to live in spiritual integrity, which means to have accountability. Yeah, I do think that idea of accountability is really interesting because I, I do think there's this thing for the character or there's this thing where, you know, I think people will feel all the time in their lives where it's like, well, is it too late? Right. You know? Yeah. And, and actually, that's one of the things that I think is really interesting because especially in that conversation about destiny, it's like we need to also unpack this dimension of time. Time is actually not a linear phenomenon. Mm. It's a simultaneous yeah. co-creation reality, which we see both from spirituality and from quantum physics and... I, I love that, that. That's what I try to say every time, like, a script is laid. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to say? <laughs> well, gonna say something else, but going back to that, for me, being able to be in relationship with the unknown is the heart of my spiritual practice. Because if I know, then there's no space for God. But mm. if I don't know, then there's infinite space for God. And mm. that, to me, feels actually really central to this conversation of mm. fate. I, you know, I've been lucky to have experiences in my life that, that felt spiritual. I mean, like, even when I was, like, 19, I remember I, I had, I re all I wanted to do was act, and, and I didn't know if I should be acting or if I should be, you know, going, going to college, and, 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 and I was actually gonna become a lawyer, because I, I was like, oh, that's boy. like professional acting in like a different way. Uh, <laughs> learning I'm that. Happy you do it. <laughs> no, I was, but, but I, 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 I remember, you know, I had gotten uh, Bell's palsy where I couldn't move half my face for like seven, eight months. You know, I, I was unable to move it and I remember thinking, wait, like, I'm gonna be an actor, but is this some sign, is this some fate of like, I shouldn't do it or I should do it? And I remember almost kind of like, yeah, looking really inwards and I just kind of made a deal with myself as to what I wanted it to mean. Because I think there were people in my family who were like, look at you, you wanted to go out and do this acting, this comedy, and it's like, you know, God took away your face. And then I remember being like, well, do I wanna think about it that way or do I wanna reframe it? And I remember choosing, no, actually, I'm gonna interpret this as, if I get better, then it's all I'm gonna focus on. <laughs> and if I don't, then I'll drop it. And then it did get better, and then I was like, okay, I gotta listen to this, and I'm just, this is all I'm gonna do. Yo, that's and, and that, incredible. And that was like my own, that was my choice.